Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at how to use bit masks for game development. But before we do that, if you enjoy the videos on this channel, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on making games on the web. So we're going to look at three things here, and that is what is a bit mask to go over what an actual what a bit mask actually is. Then we'll see how you can actually create one using JavaScript syntax. And then the last thing we're going to look at how you would use it for a game. Now it'll the example is going to be related to those three alien things: the blue guy, the red guy, and the green guy. We're going to look at how you can use bitmask to have element types that are either one or multiple types together. So let's get started by checking out what is a bitmask. So a bitmask is a series of zeros and ones. We've got three examples here: the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. Now, a bit mask being a series of ones and zeros is represented as a number. So in the top row here, this uh, series of six zeros and one one, and one in the farthest rightmost cell, represents the number one. So you can look at each one of these cells as a bit. So each bit has a value. So on the rightmost one, if you look up, in this um, example here, the rightmost bit is the value one, the one next to it, one over on the left is the value two, the one over that is four. And so things count, um, they double on each other. So this is a, a binary uh, number. So these, these zeros and ones represent a binary number or a number in binary. So you go from one to two to four to eight, 16, 32, 64. If you go further, you get 128, 256, 512. 10, 24, 20, 48, and so on. Um, and so now in JavaScript, numbers are 64 bits, but when you get into bit operations, they are done as 32 bit, uh, 32 bit integers. So when that happens, that means we have 32 different num one of these cells to use. So you're gonna go from one all the way to, um, I think 32 is like 2 billion or, or so. Um, but you only have 32 bits that you can set or unset now a set bit is where there's a one and unset one is where there is zero now when you look at the first row there what that says is that the rightmost bit is set and that makes that the value one now the one right below it the rightmost bit is not set but the middle bit or the fourth bit from the right is set and that corresponds to the value eight in binary so that would be the number eight in JavaScript if you were to print out um, the value of this um, binary number. Now the last one, and you can, you can check or uncheck as many bits as you want. So the last one has two bits checked, the rightmost bit and the uh, fifth from the right, which is the value 16. So you actually add those together. You would add 16 and one and you get 17. So that is the binary binary representation of the number 17. So let's look at how we can actually create uh, bit masks by just making numbers. So here I've got a terminal open. We're going to just use a node and uh, in this node REPL, I can just do normal JavaScript and it'll just uh, show me the value. So for example, let's do one plus one. It's going to give me two. So to create a uh, mask or a bit mask in binary, the simplest way is to use modern JavaScript's um, binary literal syntax. So we can do zero B, and then let's just say zero, zero, one. So for example, in our, in our example just before here, where our first number there at the top row was uh, six zeros and a one at the end, that was the value one, which is what this tells us. Now I only have four zeros, but all the zeros to the left really don't matter. Um, we can do this, so that's, uh, OB1, that would be the binary literal syntax for the uh, value one. So no matter how many zeros I put in here, it really doesn't matter. We just can't have more than uh, 31, 31 of them since this is total 32 bits. Okay, so that is one. Now, if we want to do eight, for example, we would do this um, one, 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 uh, zero, right. So that is eight, just like we had before in the previous example, that middle row, um, that would be the one is on the fourth from the left bit, you get eight. Now let's do uh, the 17. So there we go. 
So that's how you can very easily create binary numbers in JavaScript using the binary literal syntax. This is gonna make um, understanding what's going on way easier than if you had to actually, for example, represent number one, and then you have to do eight and then 16, right? It's easier to look at things in, um, in this binary format where you can see which bit is flipped on um, and which bits are flipped off. Now, in other languages, or if you're using an older version of JavaScript, or you just can't use binary literal syntax for whatever reason, there's also the bit shift operator. That is the double arrow pointing to the left. Now, this is where using bitwise operations, dealing with bit masks, get kind of complicated because there's these operators that we don't usually use when we're writing code, um, but they, they do slightly different things when you're using it for a bitwise operation. So there's the ampersand, there's the pipe. Uh, those are two that we'll look at later in this video, but for bit shifting, it's another convenient way to create a bunch of uh, bit values that will be used in a bit mask. So here's an example. So for uh, one, it would actually just be zero. So we're gonna shift bits to the left, zero, um, zero bits. So we're gonna move it nothing. So it's gonna be one. Now, if we wanted to move it over one, we get to two. So for example, what happens here is 0B0001, zero 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 right? So that would be one shift zero. Now if we're gonna shift it one, what that means is we're gonna shift all the bits over by one, which ends up in this and we get two. Now, if we wanna do shift three, shift left three, it ends up being this. We're basically moving the numbers all one to the left or two to the left or three to the left. So just to show you again, so B O so 0B0100 is equal to one, shift three, uh, shift two. Because we're moving the, the, the number two over. They are the same. So one, shift two, and 0B0100 are the same. And you're gonna see in some cases, different code bases where people create enums and define the values of these bit uh, values, these bit field values using the left shift operator. Now let's look at how you would create um, this bit mask to use in a game. So let's say we're going to make an enum first of the different values that we're going to use in our bit mask. So let's just call this enum elements. And I'll go over how you can do this in JavaScript as well if you're not using TypeScript. Let's just say we have fire, water, and grass types in our elements types. And so fire would be... Um, let's say 0B001, that's going to be the value 1. And then water is 0B010, since it's 1 over. And then we'll have grass, B1000. Uh, oh. So B100. So as you can see, using the binary literal syntax, it's a bit easier to see uh, where the bit is for each um, value we're going to have. It'll be, it's easier than doing, for example, one, right? And then you can do here two, if you were not using this, and then you can do here four, but one, two, four, um, maybe you can do one, two, four and see where the bit is if you've done this enough times. But if you get to a bigger number, it's harder to kind of remember where the bit is. It's easier to see it right there visually with the binary literal syntax. You can also do the bit shift. Let me just show you that. This will be shift left nothing. And then this will be one bit shift one. And then this will be one bit shift two, uh, left shift two. And so they're the same as these uh, binary literals on the right of the left shift, left shift versions. Okay, so that's how we would specify a enum of bit values. Now let's come down here. If you wanted to do JavaScript, just real quick, we would do this, make an elements object. Fire key would be 0B001. Water key would be 0B010. And then grass key would be 0B100. Now you would be able to use both like this, elements.fire. For example, it would, that this syntax here would, or uh, this way of, of using it would work in both JavaScript and TypeScript. Now, once we have an enum of the different elements, fire, water, grass, you can add more shadow, electric, 
um, whatever it might be, you can then use that in a bit mask for for a creature, for example. Let's just say creature, creature. It has an element type, element type, and then you would do elements dot fire. So this would be the fire creature. And if you wanted to have a, we just call this a dragon. Dragon. Let's call this a turtle. And we would have element type elements dot water, for example. So that's how you would set for one uh, type. Now, if you had different uh, characters or enemies or uh, NPCs or whatever in your game, they could have multiple element types or whatever other thing you're looking for. It could be a fire water dragon. Now we can do that as well. Okay, for your fire water dragon, let's just get rid of these. You would do, let's say, fire water dragon. And then your element type would be elements dot fire. And then this pipe um, operator and then elements dot water. So what you have here, and now this is too hard to see, let's just move it down so you what you have here is this element type is going to be the combination of two of these bit values so what you actually end up having here is you're going to get element type is going to actually be equal to zero e so now water is we did fire and water Water is this and fire is that. So you would basically add those two together. It does not really add, but it combines those two together. Let's take a deeper look at what is happening here. Now, this is not actual code that's gonna compile as you can see here, but we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you how this kind of works. So the element fire is zero, zero, one, and then element water is zero, one, zero. So what's happening here? is we're combining um, the values in each bit field here. So for example, if there's two zeros, the result is zero. If there is a one in either bit field, it's gonna be one. So in this case, zero and one, this is the middle, that's looking at the middle. You've got zero and you've got one, it's gonna be one. And in the case where you have one and you have zero, it's the same thing, it's also going to be one. And that's how you end up with zero, one, one. And that's gonna be, let's see, two, one, three. So if you printed this number out, it would be three. But for the use of bit masks, we're gonna use this to tell us that whatever our fire water dragon is of element type fire and element type water. Now let's see how you can actually do a check to see do they have the water type or do they have the fire type? Let's see how we can do that. Okay, so let me delete this here. Um, so we have this fire water dragon, but you can of course also have a fire grass rat or an electric water seal or something like that in your whatever your your, your uh, game is. And you'll want to know, okay, does this uh, creature have the fire element? And if that is the case, maybe this fireball attack is going to be uh, won't hurt them or hurt them much less. And on the flip side, if this is a fire uh, creature and we attack it with water or ice maybe it does double damage you know whatever your game may be now we can use this bit mask the element type bit mask and check which elemental um, which element we have is associated with this creature so we can do that using the and operator the bitwise and operator so it'll look something like this let me just do pseudocode here so if given an element type so let's just say some element type now this could be like this value basically. Actually, we should write the let's write it more Cody. So let's just do a function um, is element type, right? Let's say, and we're gonna pass in some creature, which is called the any for now, and then some element, which is gonna be of this elements type. And so this is gonna return true or false. So now, if creature has fire, it'll return true. So let's just say return creature dot element type. Now this is the bitwise and operator and whatever element give uh, passed in and the resulting value of this and operator 
equal to the element we want to check for, right? So this is how you would actually do the check. Break this in two lines. So this is how you would do the check. Creatures, element type, the and operator and bitwise operator um, against the element equals to the element you want to check for. So if we were doing fire, let's just go up here. If we were doing fire, and let's say this is uh, the water dragon's element type or the fire fire water dragon's element type, and operator elements dot fire equals elements dot fire, and we just put this here to know we want to do this part first. And then we're checking the value against this. Now this will return true if there is a fire, there, there is elements.fire, which is this, B001, um, where that bit field is checked in this bit mask. So let's just look at this a bit more. So let's say we have 001, 001. And if we're doing the, the and bitwise operation, what this is going to yield is 0, 0, 001, because there are two ones here, right? Because 1, 1, 1, 1, that tells it that results in, in 1. Now let's do 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. If we did the and operator on, oops, the and operator on this, right, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0, because there are no cases here where the same bit field has a one, what we have here is zero. Since this is zero one, we also get zero, and one zero, we also get zero. That just means that flag is not in there. So in the case we're actually using, we're doing zero and one, and we're gonna check again zero, zero, one. So here's what we see. Two zeros for zero, one zero, they're not both ones, zero. And then in this case, one, one, we get one. That's why we're checking this to be equal to what is elements fire, which is 001, and that'll be true. And that means this bit mask has the bit field we want, 001. All right, so we went over what is a bit mask, how to create one in JavaScript, and how you would use them. The concepts we covered here are the ones that, in my experience, are most used in game dev. There's, of course, the not operator and the XOR operator. Um, but what you'll find yourself using the most is bit mask to see which bits are flipped on or off is true or false. For example, in matter.js, there's collision groups that use this system. In our bit ECS videos, phase three with ECS using bit ECS, you, we could have stored the um, input controls, whether the player was pressing the up key, the left, right, or down key using a bit mask. So while we did it as a uh, as numbers, just for simplicity there, we haven't gone over bit masks yet. Um, we could also do it as a bit mask like we'd use with elements here, where you can check if the left key is pressed or the right key is pressed by giving, let's say the top, the up key, the value 0001, the down key 0010, etc. You can check which one of those is uh, checked on or not. We covered the binary literal um, syntax, that's 0B001. Zero 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 we covered the left shift operator that you'll see in examples throughout the web or um, in like C or, or C++, you'll, you'll see the, the left shift operator frequently. We went over the pipe operator or the OR operator for combining two values into a bit mask and the AND operator to check if a bit is on in your bit mask. Now, if you enjoy our videos on game development on the web, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos tackling game concepts using TypeScript and or JavaScript in frameworks and libraries like Phaser 3, Kaboom.js, Calesius, and much more. Thanks for watching.